Shalom. This week I want to deal with you with the very significant sukkiyah that we had in last week's lesson. This sukkiyah is fundamental to the whole subject of conversion, and in particular the whole issue of whether conversion needs to be sincere or not. It begins with a rather colorful Mishnah, almost a Mishnah that you might find on an afternoon TV show. We have a situation where there's a rumor about that a Jewish man is cohabiting with a non-Jewish woman or with a slave woman or vice versa. And the Mishnah tells us that in such a situation, um, the man would be prohibited from marrying the woman. Okay. Uh, but if he did go ahead and marry the woman, they would be married. Now, the one question that the Mishnah doesn't answer is, why do we have this decision? But we'll get to that later. The Talmud, when it deals with this particular question, notices right away the one issue that's sitting in the background. Namely, that if there's a question of the man marrying the woman, the Mishnah assumes that the conversion that took place was kosher. And in other words, it opens up the very issue of whether a conversion for the sake of marriage or for an ulterior motive is acceptable. The Talmud immediately challenges this question with a source from the period of the Mishnah, a source that we call a Brita, in the name of Rabbi Nehemiah. Rabbi Nehemiah claims that in all sorts of cases where there's an ulterior motive for the, con uh, for the conversion, the conversion is invalid. What makes Rabbi Nehemia tick? Ah, that's the key to our issue. Okay. It seems that for Rabbi Nehemia, a conversion for any other reason than religious sincerity um, is invalid. And so if a marriage should be a part of the reason, or whether a person wanting status by becoming a Jew is the reason, any of those reasons would invalidate a conversion. The Talmud, after noting this collision course between the conclusion of the Mishnah, which would seemingly permit such a conversion, and Rabbi Nehemiah, who would seemingly forbid such a conversion, brings along another opinion, that of Rav. Rav, who was a borderline character between the Mishnaic period and the Talmudic period, one of the founders of one of the academies in Babylonia. Rav concludes that in all cases, after the fact, said conversion would be acceptable. I want to introduce here two terms. Bideyavad and Lachatchila. The Mishnah says that Lachatchila, before the fact, a, a, the marriage between this Jew and the convert would be for, forbidden. After the fact, Bideyavad, however, it would be acceptable. With regard to conversion here, Rav assumes that lechatchila, such conversions, wouldn't be acceptable. But b'deavad, after the fact, such a conversion would be acceptable. Now we, let's come back to what the Gemara is going to do with the Mishnah. The Gemara asks the question, well, if the conversion, according to Rav, is acceptable, b'deavad, then why is the Mishnah all in an uproar about prohibiting the marriages, the chathila? In other words, what is the reason that the Mishnah rules the way it does? The, the, the Talmud, in order to answer this question, brings a verse. Haser mimcha ikshut peh. Remove from yourself haughty speech. Crooked speech. 
In other words, it seems, according to the Talmud, that the reason for the Mishnah is um, that the Talmud didn't want, the Mishnah did not want people talking about um, a given marriage and saying that, oh, the conversion and the marriage were all done for the sake of the marriage. It didn't want people um, raising or casting aspersions on the conversion that it wasn't sincere. Which brings us back to the question at hand. What about conversions and um, ulterior motives? Should they be permitted? Does Rabbi Nehemia raise any good points here? Is his, is his opinion something that we should follow carefully? And what about Rav? Who permits such a thing? What, what sense should we make of his opinion? I ask you, after watching this, to record your opinions in the discussion file so that we can ha have a conversation on this. In our next session, we'll discuss Rambam's tshuva and the tshuvot surrounding it and those that disagree with him. Shabbat Shalom.